Welcome to the Network Marketing Heroes Podcast, hosted by 38-year network marketing veteran, author of best-selling books, The Four-Year Career, and Mach 2 with Your Hair on Fire, and world-renowned speaker, Richard Bliss Brook. Learn from extraordinary leaders and get a behind-the-scenes look at what it truly takes to become a network marketing hero. On this week's episode, I started to grow as an individual. I started to work on becoming an entrepreneur. I started to work on having the right mindset. I started to work on being a better leader. But not only that, I made sure that my team understood the power of them growing as leaders, them, you know, going to the right seminars, getting the right training. Stay tuned after this episode for an exclusive discount code to get 10% off Richard's tools at blissbusiness.com. Good evening, everyone. Richard Brook here for what I believe is hero call number 62. 62 network marketing multimillionaires that have knocked it out of the park in their career, building an organization of tens, sometimes 100,000 people, sometimes occasionally even more than that. What we do on these hero calls is we find people that have successfully built their own four-year career, started out in year one, personally enrolling quite a few people, enough people to get that car over the hill, get some momentum on their team, and then they just fan the fire for the next three or four years and let geometric progressions, what Einstein called the eighth wonder of the world, take over and build them an empire. And at Bliss Business, we also vet these heroes for people that have done it with grace and honor and ethics in a way that has contributed to the integrity and the reputation of the network marketing profession. So most network marketing leaders don't actually make the cut here, even if they've built a big business, because we're looking for people that have done it uh, with class and with servant leadership. And we found a couple here that has been around the network marketing industry for quite a few years. They are, they are highly regarded by uh, people that are in other companies. They're, they're competitors, are, if you will, and they're highly regarded by people that they have touched in building their own empires. And they've been around for decades, so... They've done this more than once, which is really a, an incredible test of leadership and skills. And they've got a fascinating story because tonight they actually met in network marketing, and they're going to tell you that story, but today is their anniversary. And right. <laughs> so they're going to tell you the story of how they met how they got married in network marketing, and what they've built since then. They hail from Dallas, Texas. They are currently building a new team in a company called ID Life, based in Dallas, Texas. Pasha and Steve Carter, are you guys yes, there? Sir. Yes, we, we are. are. here, Richard. Can you hear us clearly? We're here. We hear you great. <clears throat> well, happy anniversary. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so much. It's 15 amazing, wonderful years. Yeah, 15 years. It's ironic that we're doing this interview on our 15-year anniversary. It's a blessing. Yeah, that's going to be a fun story. So uh, let's get into it. So we got both of you here. You both actually have a different story about how you got involved in network marketing and um, – you know, the people out some, a lot of the people listening out there might know that you for, for 15 years were in the services part of our profession where the product line is, you know, something like internet or telephone service or something or power. There's a lot of companies in the power part of our industry. So um, we're going to hear about how you built your empire in the services empire, services part of our business, and I think that's that's the part that's going to be the most interesting to the listeners, because that's when you actually launched your first four-year career, 
and we'll have to interview a, you again in another four years to see how you've done in the product end of the business. And I'm sure that will be a fascinating story. So let's start with you, Steve. Um, tell us, who were you prior to network marketing? I know you're a graduate of Howard University. It's very prestigious. That had to get people's attention when you're talking to them about network marketing. But who were you and where were you and what were you doing? And who said the magic words that got you to take a look at sure. ACN, your, your first company? And when I say who was it, I'm really curious to know how did you know them, or maybe you didn't know them, but who were they relationship-wise to you? Tell us that story. Right. Well, Richard, first let me just start by saying I appreciate individuals like yourself that are putting these platforms together for listeners to really get an inside understanding of our industry because we've got one of the most incredible industries on the planet, and it takes a certain type of leader like yourself to just – pour into others and really open up people's minds to what we have our hands on. So before I even get into that, I just want to just say, hey, man, I'm proud of you, and I thank you for inviting myself and Pasha on, and uh, keep doing what you're doing. You make our industry better than it already is, so we appreciate that. But in thank answer you, to Steve. your question, it, it, you're welcome. In answer to your question, Richard, we, I actually got introduced to this business by today, even, even to this day, one of my best friends. And he and I had gone to school. You mentioned Howard University. That's where we went to school together. So after we finished college, it didn't take long for us to realize that we just wanted to do something else. We, we didn't know what, and I know that's where a lot of people are, listeners that are listening now, not really sure what they want to do. We just did not want a limitation on what we could do financially. And I think that all things happen for a reason. The good Lord has a way of orchestrating our steps. So what happened, my buddy and I had had a previous conversation about wanting to do something, just not really knowing what. And lo and behold, he went out to a social function in Chicago, where I'm originally from, and ended up striking up a conversation. And I'll tell you, Richard, I wasn't even at that event. But afterwards, he called me and said, hey, Steve, I think I might have found something that we could look into. This might be what we're, what we're looking for. And he had no idea how to explain it, because obviously he had just met the individuals, but I came out for two reasons, Richard. Number one is that he said that he didn't think there was a limit to how much money we could make, so that grabbed my attention. But the second and I think most important reason was to this day he's my best friend, and I trust him. And I know he'd only get me to come look at something that he felt good about, he believed in. So I came out on blind faith just because of, of my relationship with him. Well, that's, um, that's, that's how I got in the business. And I think, you know, if, uh, if we had a thousand people in front of us from any company and we asked them how many of you were sponsored by either, um, a good friend or family member, um, my guess is about seven. I've actually asked this question to thousands of people. My, my experience is about 70% of the room's hands go up Yeah, and so when you're, you know, when you're talking to people about, well, who do I approach? And, you know, I want, oh, maybe I don't want to approach my friends and family. I want to, like, market on the Internet or something. You know, all of those systems are great. But if you avoid friends and family, you, you avoid 70% of your best market. Because, That's like right. you said, I mean, you could probably write a whole book about the adventures you and this best friend have had in network marketing and makes it kind of special to be able to do it with your friend. So, okay, that's how you got in. And what year was that, Steve? That was in 19, what was it, Pasha, 90, something? No, 80. No, what was no, 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 that was like, 80, it was 90, that was 95, 96, 96, 96, 96, 1996. Okay, so, <laughs> 96. So, Pasha, tell us, uh, your story parallel to that like where were you what were you doing and how did you find acn well i was actually i just moved to atlanta georgia from alabama at the time and i was at a point where i was working full-time at emory university 
I was a gymnastics coach in the evenings, and I was an NFL cheerleader. I cheered for the Atlanta Falcons at that time. So I had <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally three jobs. <laughs> and uh, the person who invited me out was actually a family member. It was my brother. And the interesting thing about it was it wasn't the first invitation um, from a business perspective because he'd invited me out to different companies that he'd been a part of. What was unique for me was the timing in my life because I was really at a low point at that time. I was um, punching the clock every day, working hard every day. I was exhausted. I was living with my best friend. You know, she had a one-bedroom apartment, and I was sleeping on the floor of her one-bedroom apartment. So what was unique for me was this time when he mentioned something, I, I was thinking to myself, I mean, what do I have to lose? And I went out. I wasn't the most positive person in the room, I'll be honest with that, because I was just in, in, in one of those dark moments. And when I went out to take a look at it, it changed my life. I was, it was in the middle of the day. I'll never forget it was a lunch presentation. And I was invited out in Marietta, Georgia, uh, right across from, I think it was Cumberland Mall. And when I walked into that room, it absolutely changed my life. And that was the day that my life changed, and my mind opened up to the world of entrepreneurship. So your brother, who had been in more than one network marketing company, or was he showing you just different kinds of business opportunities? Yes, he'd been in more than one network marketing company as well. Uh-huh. So it wasn't so much probably what he said. He just caught you at the right time. Exactly. It was a timing thing. Yeah, so, you know, I think we, the three of us have probably taught uh, hundreds of thousands of people this one key distinction about prospecting people. When people say no, it's not because they're not interested in products like we have in most cases. It's not because they don't want to make extra money. It's not because they don't have time. Everybody has time for something that they're compelled to do. And it's certainly not because they don't like to sell because they're probably trying to sell us on why they don't want to do it. Right. That's right. Absolutely. (laughs) It's, you know, it's either a time when people can pay attention when, you know, doing something different is on their radar or, you know, it's not. And most people kind of wander around life in overwhelm and, they're thinking about like how do they keep their head above water or how do they pursue what it is they want to pursue. And we come out of left field and say, oh, by the way, weren't you thinking about building an empire in network marketing? <laughs> no, right. actually I wasn't. Uh, and so there's so much magic in just keeping the opportunity in front of people on a regular basis without being a nuisance, without being a stalker, without being obstinate about what they should do, but just keeping the opportunity in front of them because like you, um, things change and you never know when somebody might be ready. So yeah, that's how you both got in. And was that in the same year or were you a year or two apart in your getting in the business? We that were about – it was actually about a month apart, but she got in, I think, December of 95, and then I got in January of 96. Okay. So you're, you're, you're both building in the same company, and uh, Pasha, are you in Atlanta or are you in Alabama? Atlanta. I was in Atlanta, Georgia. Okay, and where are you, Steve, at that time? I was in Chicago, Illinois. Okay, so... You guys are like six, seven hundred miles, eight hundred miles apart, and you're building yeah. parallel businesses. And so, Steve, let's jump back to you. And so, from the time that you started to the time that you met Pasha backstage, which we'll get to that story, how many years was that? That was only about a year, maybe a little bit more than a year, maybe 14, 15 months. Um, because okay. we ended up, yeah, yep, we, we hit right. the top position so, the same weekend. Got it. So tell us about that 15 months. So you went from nothing to hitting the top position in that company. And so t- tell us about that process. Like in that 15-month period, how many people did you personally sponsor? 
maybe how many people did you sponsor your first 90 days? And yeah. what happened? I mean, that's a pretty fast ignition of geometric progressions to get to the top of the comp plan in 15 months. And that's probably really rare. Matter of fact, that is really rare, probably not very duplicatable. But tell us the story. Um, how did you go about building your business and what happened? Yeah, well, we, I, what I did was, you know, I, I kind of played around with it for a little while, not really understanding the value. And I think that's what a lot of people do, Richard. They just don't really understand what they have their hands on. But it, it didn't take long for me to realize that I was witnessing other people having tremendous levels of success. And I ended up getting real focused and real serious about the business. And then I, I started plugging into the leaders that were really making things happen. And I'll tell you, it just started happening for me, slowly but surely. It didn't happen overnight, uh, even though 15 months sounds like a, a pretty quick success story. But the first you know, year, it, it just was kind of going slow. And then we got traction and things started happening. And I just really started getting a handle on it. And, and things started taking off. And I, I was coachable and just doing the fundamental things of talking to people and how many people I could go after and really share the business with. And so I started out pretty slow in regards to how many people I recruited. I probably let the first year go by where I didn't really recruit that many people. I didn't know what I was doing. But when I got refocused and started coming out to a, an actual training where I sat on the front row and decided that I'm going to become a student, that was when I started learning proper procedures of how to approach somebody and what to say. And it didn't take long from there to really start having tremendous success. So by the time you uh, got backstage, top position, how many people did you have in your team? We probably had... Uh, I'd say probably a few hundred people, probably about two, two or three hundred people at that time. Okay, awesome. And so, Pasha, tell us the same story. So how did you get started, and how did you get backstage top position in the company? Well, i tell you what happened for me is I, I was invited to a convention, and I'll never forget the convention was literally within two weeks of me getting started. So I just – figured out how to come up with the investment um, at that time, which I didn't have. And then they said, well, you've got to go to this convention in Florida. And I remember thinking to myself, there's no way I can make this happen financially. But after talking to a few people, I said, okay, well, if I'm going to do this, at least let me go to the company convention. So we got in a car. We, five people in a, a car, drove to Florida. Um, I'll never forget packing granola bars because I knew I wasn't going to have a whole lot of money to be able to pay for hotel food. So just in case I was hungry, I was like, well, at least I have this. And at that convention, I, I sat in the convention thinking to myself and seeing all of these people walk the stage and hearing their stories. And it made me say, wow, if they can do this, then maybe it's possible for me. So for the first time, I saw the big picture. And I'll never forget on the ride back home, we were game planning and saying what the next 90 days is going to be like. And we put ourselves on a 90-day blitz where we started doing conference calls and meetings and customer building parties and everything. And we just created this magical momentum. And even though it was challenging, what started to happen is we started to get traction and we were having fun doing it. And that's what was the first spike for me to start having some success was going to the company convention and really seeing the big picture. Yeah, okay. So tell us the love story. Uh, you guys are on stage. You're being promoted to the top position. You're backstage. This has got to be a fun story. <laughs> I'll start with that one, Richard. Matter of fact, um, I remember seeing Pasha walking through the convention, and, and this was obviously – I think she started gaining traction in her business prior to me because I'll never forget, this is a true story. She's walking through the convention, and there's this huge crowd of people following her. Now, she caught my eye just when I saw her walk by, and I was standing next to one of my buddies. And I'll never forget, she stopped, and someone grabbed a chair, and they helped her up on the chair. And she st stood on that chair, and she started speaking to her team. And I started seeing just a sea of people crowding around this young lady. And I'm thinking, who is this young lady? And, and she's got 
a lot of power, obviously. And, and it just people were just coming from everywhere, and she was just passionately talking to them, and, and, and you could just feel her enthusiasm. And I said to myself, and I looked at my buddy and said, man, she, she's, she's pretty hot. And um, he said, man, you need to go talk to her. <laughs> so he was nudging and encouraging me, Richard, to go talk to her. But I, I had a plan. I immediately said to myself, no, I'm not going up as a fan. I'm just going to get what I need to get done so that by the time we meet, she'll know who I am. And that was really what happened. And so I went to work. So she really motivated me to get this thing done. And I just figured it out and got it done, and we got promoted the same weekend of all weekends. And it was 10 promotions that weekend, Richard, and, and just random. It was random as far as the order of the promotions. But she was number nine, and I was number 10. And so we were backstage. <laughs> and at that point, she actually, and she may beg to differ, but she walked up to me and introduced herself and said, congratulations. And I said, congratulations to you as well. And we exchanged phone numbers, and I knew right then and there, Richard, it was game on. <laughs> well, all right, Paji, you, you're going to have to explain. Did you actually make the first move? And if you did, what was that all about? Funniest, you know, the funniest thing, Richard, this has been the 15-year debate. We've been married for 15 years, and we're still having this debate. And I tell him I was being cordial and just congratulating him. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but no, well, with all seriousness, um, I knew who he was. And I'll never forget, we had these, back, back then, that's when you had the company newsletter. And I'll never forget, I was a part of an organization at the time, and we had a lot of momentum. So most of the top leaders at that time were coming out of, uh, out of our organization, tag team marketing. And so there was this gentleman who, out of Chicago, nobody knew of him, and all of a sudden he was on the newsletters. He was the number one guy in the company. And we're like, wait a minute, who is this guy? And I'll never forget hearing a lot of people talking about this superstar that was emerging out of the Chicago area and how he's just taking the business by storm. So I knew who he was, and I'd heard his story. And um, so when we got backstage, we I just felt like we should connect, and we exchanged information. And the interesting thing about that is we literally started talking and really became the best of friends. And it yeah. felt like I knew him all my life. It was the most amazing thing. So as we would talk, it was one of those things where, I just fell in love with the person and who he was, and then the rest is history. Now we've been married for 15 years. We have four amazing kids, and it's just been an absolute amazing journey. So, so yeah, Richard, we want to hear about that. I've got a picture. Yeah, go ahead, on Steve. That, Richard, she she was really, you know, I, I have to be 100% transparent that she was my motivation, and, and so yeah. you know, for the for the listeners that are listening, it may not always be about making the money. But when I saw who she was, I really wanted to know her. And, and she had no idea. But that inspired me to take this seriously. And I was so proud of just seeing this young lady that was independently, she was single, and she was having all this success. And then when I got promoted that same weekend, I just knew the stars were aligning. And, and like she said, we, we hit it off immediately because we had so many common goals. You know, it's, we had a common destination, and it's, it's pretty simple to fall in love with somebody that has the same morals, the same ethics, the same work ethic, the same goals and visions and dreams, and we start having those kinds of conversations almost instantly. And that was when it didn't take but a, a little while longer after we started dating. We, we got married after we, after we really went on our first date or so. We, we got married just a couple years later, right, Pasha? Yep. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, that, that that's like really great quit insurance. I mean, how could you quit the business after after that, Steve? You got to show up and you got to kick some butt, or that's you're not right. going to win. Her, you're not going to win her hand. I'm surprised yep. it took two years. Oh yeah, but my so, plan worked. Well, Richard, my plan worked perfectly. I knew better than to walk up to her and talk to her when she was having all this success and, and, and I and I was just really getting the ball rolling. I said, Let me let me at least establish something so that I've got something to bring to the table. So that worked like clock. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. Well, so you guys have had like a 
crazy, wonderful career in the last 15 years. Uh, I read somewhere you've made over $10 million, which that's a, that's a big chunk of change. Um, tell us, uh, I want to hear two things. Like, one, um, the fact that you've made that kind of money, had and raised four beautiful children, now this is your 15th wedding anniversary. Tell us what the last 15 years was like in terms of, you know, where are some of the places that you've gone that you never would have expected to go, people that you've met, things that you've learned? Uh, it's not about the houses and the cars and the money. It's about right. And what right. I want to hear about are the experiences what has your life been like the last 15 years, experience-wise? I'll start with that one, Richard. And, you know, it's ironic that you pose that question because I've actually incorporated that into any time I'm in front of a room giving a presentation or if I'm on a webinar giving a presentation, I talk from a very generic sense of what I believe human beings instinctive, instinctively want. And that is, you know, they want to – be financially independent, they want to be in good health, Uh, they want to have personal development, Uh, friendships and relationships are important. And the fifth thing is what you just posed the question on, which is freedom, just being able to do whatever you want to do, when you want to do it. And it's ironic that I look at what our life has become because of this industry. We've been to places that we know that we would not have gone to had we not gotten in network marketing. I mean, we've been to Dubai. We've been to uh, Greece and Turkey and Italy and France. I mean, we, we've been to so many places around the world, and a lot of times I look at the fact that, man, we just – I'm pretty sure we wouldn't have been in a position to do this had we not gotten money as an issue out of the way. And I think that's the biggest thing that people don't realize that the industry gives you. It gives you complete freedom to do the things that you want. And I learned that. I was just thankful that I had the kind of mindset that there were no limitations on what this industry could yield. I I got that early on because there wasn't a limit to how big of a team you can build and how many people you can bless with an opportunity because so many people are hurting. And I knew that. So I said, look, it's an endless amount of prospects out here that are looking and praying for something, and if you've got something you can honestly give, why not share it? So we've been all over the world, cruises and everything, Passion, and you can piggyback on on that, because I know one of the places, out of everywhere we've been, one thing Passion says is, boy, if I ever wanted to move somewhere, I think it might be Dubai. I said, well, we're not moving moving to Dubai, Passion. (laughs) Why not? (laughs) <laughs> exactly, but if so, I ever were to leave the U.S., that's where I would go. <laughs> I loved it there. It was absolutely so, beautiful, breathtaking. Pasha, tell us about, from your viewpoint, what are some of the experiences that you've had? Well, some of the experiences for me that have really, when I look back over the past 15 years where I say to myself, wow, uh, because of network marketing we were able to do that, are uh, some of the things that you, you may look at as the smaller things like, We're here all day. Both of us work from home. With us having four kids, being able to get up and take them to school or take them directly to the to the bus stop in the morning. Every morning, they're able to see us. We're able to see them off. And when they get home from school, we're here. It's so funny because, you know, I look around the neighborhood and so many parents work a full time job, and the kids get home at three. The parents don't get home till five. So a lot of the neighborhood kids, when they get off the bus, they come to our house. So our house is like party central. So everybody yep. gets off the bus and comes directly to our house and spends that time. And it's just a joy that we can provide that. And the other thing is just being able to take care of our parents. You know, both of our parents um, were educators. Um, my mom was a teacher for 29 years. Steve, your mom taught for, was it 30 years maybe? Yeah, 30 years, like that. 30 years. 30 yeah. years. Yeah, and they both, they worked very, very hard, but both retired with, you know, very small incomes. And for us to be able to take care of them and do things for them that, you know, we wouldn't have been able to do if we were just punching a clock and working a job. So to give them the lifestyle that we've always felt they deserve because they sacrificed so much for us on 
uh, a teacher's salary. So those are the things for me that I, I love the most when I say the freedom and just being able to help our family and then being able to just give back to the community. Those are the things that when I say, wow, you know, we've been blessed, so now we're able to give those blessings away. Yeah, and, and, that's and Richard, great. I'll and I... back, I'll put you back on what Pasha said. You know, a lot of I think most people, when they think about becoming successful and they think about making a bunch of money, a lot of times it's just kind of human instinct, I think. Nothing wrong with it, but human instinct to think about sales and what we can gain from making a bunch of money. But what I've learned through having the type of success that we've had is that it feels much better to do for other people. And, and one in particular incident that comes to mind that I talk about all the time is one of a, a defining moment for me, Richard, was my mom turned 70 years old about maybe four or five, no, no, actually about six or seven years ago. And she turned 70. And I'll never forget, I, I, I looked at Passion, I said, what are we going to do for mom? And I called my dad, who they're both still in Chicago, and I asked him, I said, what are we doing for mom's 70th birthday? And my dad had no plan. And I said, man, let's do something. This is the big 7-0 for mom. And, you know, we did a big party for your 70th. And there were just no plans made. And so I, I volunteered to, to pay for everything. And it was immediately agreed upon that we'll do something. So I said, don't tell mom I'm going to come in. We're going to surprise. And But I came in with an agenda. I, I said to my wife, Pasha, I said, Pasha, there's one item my mom has been wanting for her entire life. Ever since I was a kid, Richard, she always talked about one day I'm going to get one of those. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, that is beautiful. Oh, I'm going to have that one day. And I heard that for <laughs> decades. And so on her 70th birthday, not only did we surprise her by walking into a restaurant in Chicago where she thought we were in Dallas, and I handed her a little white box and when she opened that box, Richard, she got through all the little stuffing paper that I stuffed in there, and there was a key. And, there was, and the key was to a champagne gold Jaguar that I had right out front of the restaurant, paid in full with a big red bow on it. And I said, come on out front and let's see your birthday gift. And I took my mom out there. I had a photographer there and captured everything on film. And it was the defining moment for me. Because what I said, Richard, was it's so sad to see that most people are only able to pay their respects or show their love or express their appreciation for people after they've been called home. And, and it's, it's really because most people just don't have the means to do the things that their hearts might want them to do that their bank account won't allow. And so when I gave my mom that Jaguar, I realize that this is much bigger than me as an individual. And so that, that's that been one of the most defining moments for me is being able to do that. Yeah, and that's beautiful. Fun, fun, fun. Yeah. All right, Empire Builders, let's, uh, let's move to business a little bit. So need to hear from each one of you. I uh, want to start with you, uh, uh, Pasha, about – what is the smartest thing that you've ever done in your network marketing career and the kind of thing that would be a lesson to other people? So not like, well, I met Steve or married Steve, but <laughs> um, something that would be a principle or a philosophy or a strategy and maybe uh, you did it one time, or maybe it's been a habit of yours over and over again, but it's the number one thing that you can think of in the moment that has led to your success, and I don't necessarily mean financial success. Maybe it could be personal development. Maybe it could be relationships. Maybe it could be health. Maybe it could be integrity, uh, something like that. What would come to mind for you as number one thing? Well, for me, the number one thing was once I realized the power of growing people, you know, when I first got in the business, my thing was to recruit, 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 recruit. And what I found was it didn't matter how many people that I recruited. If you continue to recruit people, but it's like a revolving door and they're quitting because they're not growing as a person, it doesn't matter. You can recruit 100 and lose 99 the next week. But when I started to realize the importance of developing leaders, that's when my entire business changed. That's when 
the doors open, and that's when the promotion started to happen because I started to grow as an individual. I started to work on becoming an entrepreneur. I started to work on having the right mindset. I started to work on being a better leader. But not only that, I made sure that my team understood the power of them growing as leaders, them, you know, going to the right seminars, getting the right trainings, reading the right books, because all of the same things were happening to us in network marketing. It's just like any other business. You're going to get in. You're going to have some success. You're going to have some people who who win. You're going to have some people who quit. You're going to have some customers that get on. You're going to have some customers that leave. But it's all about who you are and how you manage that. And if you can grow people and now they become a different person, as they experience those things, it doesn't affect them the same way. So then you have that stickability, and now you have more individuals that are sticking around because of who they are and the fact that they've gone through personal growth and development. So for me, when I created a culture in our organization of understanding, hey, guys, it's one thing to get in a company, but it's another thing to get in a company and become a leader and grow as a leader. So for me, that was it. That's beautiful. And so can you give us some specifics on how did you do that? Like what, what are the systems that you put in place to create a leadership culture? Well, first of all, for every call that we do, number one, I'd always have a certain book because I'm an avid reader. So I love to read. I'm always reading something. So I would share those books that I would read with our organization. So if we were on a conference call, if I'm reading Think and Grow Rich or if I'm reading, you know, The Power of Focus or The Four-Year Career, whatever book that we're reading at the time, what I'm doing is I'm making sure that we're funneling that information back to our organization. But not only that, I'm saying, hey, guys, you know, get on with your team and start teaching your team because one of the things that one of my um, – good friends taught me years ago was when you learn, teach. And so everything that I would learn, I would automatically teach it. And the other thing that we would do is as we would start to go to different, you know, conventions, whether it was to go see a Tony Robbins or listen to this person or that person, at first I was going by myself. But then by the second, third year, I started saying, wow, let's take my organization. So as a team, we would go to these amazing events together or we'd go to our company conventions and we'd make sure that we were all together. We all had our notebooks and we were all avid students and we understood to never stop growing because I think sometimes in network marketing um, that we'll start learning and then we'll start to feel like we got it. And I've noticed that when people stop growing and they stop reading because they feel like they got it, what starts to happen is the momentum stops. Their business starts to slow down because it's, it's just like anything else. You've got to feed that mind, and you've got to put that positive stuff in every day, every day, not just for four weeks or for 12 weeks. Yeah, got it. All right, great work. Steve, what do you have to say about that? What's the smartest thing you've ever done? Well, it, it's piggybacking on what Pasha said. I think what the smartest thing I've ever done was to realize that frustration in our industry is self-inflicted. And so <laughs> what I mean by that to the, to the listeners is don't ever allow other people's actions to discourage you or frustrate you because human beings are going to be just that, human beings. And unfortunately, in many cases, people have become professional quitters. And, and it's just because that's what the environment they grew up in and like Pasha just shared, most people don't get that personal development. So as soon as they come up against their first level of resistance, people are saying, well, this isn't working, or this is too slow, or I thought I would be making this amount of money by then. And I use an analogy, Richard, that, you know, business like network marketing is no different from, from the philosophy of going to a higher education. For example, it amazes me that someone can – understand that if they graduate high school and they want to go to higher education, it is an assumed understanding that it is a four-year minimum, unless you're just exceptionally bright and you can get out of there in three years, great. But everybody knows, for the average person, it's a four-year deal if you're going to a university. And for individuals like myself, I'm unashamed to say, it was a five-year deal to go to a university. <laughs> but, but the reality is, I never expected to graduate 
before those four years. And, and so it's amazing that when people get into business, Richard, like network marketing, they start getting frustrated in their first six months. And I always refer to that analogy, and I say, look, you're still in your freshman year. This is your second semester. How, you know, why are you getting frustrated and you haven't even gotten out of your freshman year yet? Why are you expecting millions of dollars and you haven't gotten your, your degree yet? And so I think everyone has to put in that four years, which is parallel to your book and what you, what you talk, constantly teach. And so I like to put the right perspective in because if people have a, a, a natural perspective like they do for college, nobody would call home and say, I'm frustrated because the teacher was mean to me and I don't think <laughs> and I didn't get my degree yet, so I'm, I'm ready to throw the towel in. But they do that with network marketing. And, and the difference, Richard, is that when you look at school – that's a preparation. That's, that's, a, that's a training ground to hopefully come out and earn a, a career, earn a living. In our business, you are in the actual vehicle to earn the living. So why would you give that less priority and, and less of a time frame of growth and understanding before you realize I'm not even going to look at the results until I've been in this thing for four years because at least at that point I can start questioning why I don't yet have my network marketing degree. And whatever that may be, yeah. it could be a certain income level, a certain rank, it could be not having to work a job, it could be whatever, but that's what was magical for me was realizing all we can do is what Pasha said, and that is give everybody every bit of resource that we utilize for ourselves, turn around and pass it down to the team, and what they do with it is really ultimately up to them. And so I learned early on not to get frustrated when someone does not take the, the blessing that we've passed on to them and they, and they don't utilize it. So they've got to go through that personal development on their own. And as long as I feel like we have provided it and we've pointed them in the right direction for all their resources, what they do with it is up to them. Yeah. You know, you remind me there, Steve, that I, I created the four-year career, didn't write the book, but I created the presentation in 1979 wow. uh, as part of trying to recruit, this is how desperate I was, I was trying to recruit marketing majors at Drake University in Des Moines, Iowa. And because I didn't, I didn't have any prospects. I didn't have anything going on in business. I was starving to death. And, and I just got this idea. Um, wow. I wonder how many hours people spend, how much money they spend and how many hours they spend being a freshman in college mm -hmm. and then being a, and then being a sophomore and then being a junior and then being a senior. And I, I did this, uh, uh, recruiting effort uh, under the auspices of doing a survey. So I got a bunch of Drake marketing majors together and I gave them a survey and the survey asked them questions like how many hours a week are you spending being a freshman, a successful mm -hmm. freshman, not partying, but studying and being in class and taking tests. How many hours did you spend? Because these were seniors. So they were in their senior year. How many hours did you spend as a sophomore? How many hours as a junior? How many hours as a senior? And how much money did you or somebody spend right. to send you to this institution? And then the pivotal question I asked them is, how much money do you expect to earn your fifth year? So, you know, back then, this is like 35 years ago, you know, the amount of money that they spent on Drake University was not that much compared to today. But the time spent was still there. I mean, you're, you were talking about 30 to 60 hours a week, people right. spending getting educated. <clears throat> and these were marketing majors, which is there wasn't entrepreneurial programs back then, and Drake didn't have a business school. So I was trying to get to the closest thing that might be a network marketer and then asking them, what do you expect to earn your fifth year? And the average answer was $35,000 a year. Wow. <laughs> and part, part of the whole big picture that I was looking at here, which speaks directly to what both of you were talking about, about your career and financial freedom 
is, you know, you just look at people and you and say, well, <clears throat> you know, where do you live and why do you live there? And in most cases, people live where they live because that's where they grew up or that's where their first decent job was offered to them. Right. And that's, that's where they end up falling in love, and that's where they end up building a life. And once you get into it <clears throat> with a job or a wife or a husband, it's not so easy to pick up and reinvent your life and say, so I'm going to go build my life in the city of my dreams. And so the vision that I cast to these seniors was, what would your life be like if you could graduate Drake University and you already had a $35,000 a year income? And so what I pitched them was, was just carve out, you know, five or 10 hours a week and build this network marketing model alongside your education. So when you graduate, you have financial freedom. You don't have to take the first job. You don't have to live um, in some place just because that's where you got a job. The whole world now becomes uh, possibilities for you. Your choices will be totally different. Your life will be totally different because you have financial freedom, even at $35,000 a year. I mean, imagine if every, if you put that in today's dollars, every graduate, of college would graduate with a hundred thousand dollar a year residual income. Imagine the choices that they would make. It's not that they would necessarily continue on with network marketing. You know, maybe they wanted to be a business major or maybe they wanted to be a teacher or imagine how their life would be different if they graduated college instead of being, you know, hundred or two hundred thousand dollars in debt. Right. They've got a multi million dollar business and it's doable. So, all right, next question. What's the biggest? What's the biggest mistake that you've made, and and you can't use the opposite of the smartest thing you did. <laughs> you got to you got to come up with something different, and this could be a mistake that you did one time. Might have been something you said. Might have been something you did, or it might have just been a pattern over a period of time. And again, it doesn't necessarily have to lead to a lack of income. It could be lead to a lack of relationships, integrity, health. Hmm. Pasha, what's uh, the you biggest mistake you, you made? Yeah, 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 go, go ahead, first, Steve, Pasha. you start. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. I've, made so many, well, look, I've made so many mistakes I could go on, but go ahead, I'll let well, you start that I'll, one. <laughs> you know, Richard, I'll, 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 t I'll tell you what, what comes to mind as the first one. Now, and, it, and, and ironically, it, it turns out to not necessarily be a mistake for others, as an example, because I always encourage not to do this. But my, I think my biggest mistake was I, as soon as I started seeing a level of success, I just jumped out there, quit my job, and went full time. And what happened was yeah. it, it really put some pressure on me. Now, it ended up being a blessing in disguise, but everyone doesn't have the temperament to be in a position where now you just eat what you kill, you know. And so I, I remember, I'll never forget a defining moment for me, Richard, was I had my brother moved out of his apartment, my apartment. We shared it because he got engaged, and we had a two-bedroom apartment, 700 bucks a month rent, and I was barely scraping along with 350 being paying half of that. And so when he got engaged and said, hey, I'm moving out, I'm thinking, no, you're not, not until we get a roommate in here with me. And he moved out. And, and I was, had just gone full time in my network marketing business. And I'll never forget when the sheriff came banging on my door uh, wanting to evict me. That was such a defining moment. And so my mistake was I think I just jumped out there a little too soon uh, just off the excitement alone and didn't really have any type of a foundation. But it ended up really inspiring me and motivating me, and I went to work because I had to. I had no choice. There was no way I was going to go back to proving some of my family members and friends to be correct in saying that this network marketing thing would never work because a lot of people said that. And so I just was strong enough to not buy into their opinion. I had witnessed too much. I believed too much in the industry, and I knew it was – strictly up to my decisions. But that was one that if I had to do it again, 
I, I probably would change it because there was a lot of pressure. It ended up being a good thing in the, in the end, but it was, it was pressure. And I don't, I don't want anyone duplicating that too soon. You know, everybody's got their own temperaments to deal with that. But that's what comes to my mind when I think of a mistake that I made that I'm like, oh, that was a big one. Well, you know, that's, I think that's so brilliant, Steve, because whether or not people actually go full-time or not, which I think is more often than not a mistake, it seems to be a goal that people have. You know, let's quit our jobs, let's go full-time, and uh, here's, here's a bit of math that I want to map on to your experience with that. You know, if somebody makes $5,000 a month, seven thousand a month, ten thousand dollars a month in network marketing, they are an exceptional leader. Right. They are rarefied air. I mean they are they are less than one percent of the people who sign up hoping that they might make that kind of money. You know, you got the whole you got the hope crowd. They sign up, oh my gosh, yes, I hope I make that kind of money. You know, four years later, it's less than 1% of the people that have developed the motivation and the skills and the perseverance to actually make that kind of money. Now, imagine if you make that kind of money and then you go full-time. Kind of the thinking is, well, if I can make $7,000 a month part-time, well, I can make $70,000 a month full-time. <laughs> right. Well, well the, the trouble, here's the trouble with going full-time. You make $7,000 a month and you go full-time. Now, $7,000 a month part-time, $5,000 a month part-time, $3,000 a month part-time. That, that is multimillionaire making income because now, unlike everybody else you know, you have cash flow that you can invest in, one, paying off all your debts, two, investing in real estate and equities, so you got to – trifecta approach to wealth building. You've got your asset income from network marketing, but now you've got the money to buy a rental house or to start to pile up a, an investment profile. But if you go full time at $7,000 a month, you're right back where you started. You're broke like everyone else. Yep. And, That's right. and then when you're, out pros, when you're out prospecting, you know, you show people your opportunity, you show them your video or something, and then you proudly tell them, and yeah, I'm full time. Well, they expect you, you better look like 70 grand a month if you're full time. <laughs> right. You know, you, right. Don't, you don't get to drive a mediocre car. You don't get to not pick up the tab. You don't, not, you don't get to... You know, not being a wearing a thousand dollar outfit, because you create a huge expectation for yourself when you're full time. That's right. And it's mm -hmm. not That's the right. best. It's not the best prospecting posture. The best prospecting posture is: look, I'm just like you. I'm doing this just like I'm proposing you do it. Do it on a part time basis, and look what I'm doing on a part time basis. If I'm full time, your prospects. They hold you in a whole different light, really high expectations, and they don't ever expect to go full-time, so you're unrelatable to them. That's right, and it's, so difficult, huge... to, it's, it's so difficult to, to, to not give off the desperation versus inspiration feeling because yes. when, you know that, when you know that closing this new person in the business is going to pay a bill, that's a bad thing place to be and and, and most, people, really they can't, most people can't survive that so i don't wish that on my my worst enemy but i survived it i'm thankful but it was a lesson learned that i don't encourage others to do that i i love what you're yeah, saying about you know adding that extra money to your full time and you and then that inspirational posture is so much stronger than that desperation posture yeah for sure so uh Pasha, what you, you said you made a lot of mistakes. You must have one that stands out. What's your big mistake? Yes, I think my out of my many mistakes that I've made over the years, um, and I always tell my kids, embrace them, because when you wake up, hopefully you've made some mistakes because that means you're learning. But for me, I think my biggest mistake in network marketing was having, the in the beginning, the all-or-nothing approach. 
I was one of those people where I'd go to an event and I would get so excited after training, and I would say, okay, I'm going to recruit. I'm going to talk to 25 people every day. So I'd go out and I'd start talking to people. Start, and I'd do this for maybe seven days. And then after seven days, if I wasn't having success, I'd start to feel like, oh, my goodness, I gave it my all. I gave 100%. It's not working. So then I'd just quit, and I'd stop doing anything because I was going overboard versus just having that even keel of saying, oh, just recruit a few, free, few people here, a few people there, talk while you're out. I mean, so for me, it was that all or nothing approach. And what that did for me was it sent me on this emotional roller coaster because I was either way, way up or way, way down. And when you do that, it's like this, uh, my emotions were all over the place. My my team could see it because one day they talked to me and I'm fired up. The next day they talked to me and, or they call and I wasn't answering the phone. So that was <laughs> <laughs> right. And that's kind of tough when I'm your upline, you know. So, <laughs> so for me, it was having that all or nothing. And I had to learn again through personal growth and development that you've got to learn and understand that through all the no's, that the yeses are going to come and understanding that just because someone says no to me, that doesn't mean, no, I don't like you or no, I don't want to be your friend or no, I never want to see you again. It just means, no, I'm not interested in your business right now. And I had to really, really, really grasp that and get that so that every single day I could get out and go talk to people without it being this big thing. Yeah. Uh, Wow. Great lessons. All right, last question for the two of you. Um, you've had a you've had a beautiful career, four beautiful children, lots of money, lots of adventure. Uh, you de- you, you've obviously uh, mastered the network marketing professional uh, aspect. Like you have total mastery of the business. We could we could drop you out of an airplane in any city in the world and as probably as long as you had a cell phone connection that's right a year a year later you'd have a thousand people in the room uh so what do you what what's next for you guys i know you recently moved from services to products um and you know both obviously work but um one has, you know, there's some obvious differences there around building an empire, but I'm I'm more interested in like what do you see for yourselves, you know, 15 years from now. So yep. you two are young. You're young, but you already have 15 years of success under your belt. You are the future of our profession. What do you see for 10, 15 years down the road in terms of what are you doing? Who are you in our profession? What are you contributing? And what kind of life do you have? Well, I'll, I'll start with that one, Pasha. Um, two things. One is having made that transition, Richard, from service-based to, to now being product-based, um, as we begin to get older, what has really become uh, a, a very high priority for me is also making sure that we're taking care of ourselves physically. So being in the health and wellness space now, it gives us a purpose. I think that we finally feel like we're doing business with more than just a monetary purpose because we've got the children now, and, and it doesn't make, make any difference how much money we make if we're not living well and living clean and eating right and working out healthy, exercising. All of that is, is more important to me now. So I feel like that's a, a big thing for me is to just – make sure that we're spreading the word of health and wellness to to try to extend people's lives the best we can. But the other thing, which is the second part of of the next 15 years, is really being an example for personal development and coaching and mentoring and speaker camps and things that we're really wanting to do to just kind of help take people's lives to that next level. That's where we really see ourselves fitting in is – is becoming those those virtual mentors to anybody that just wants to learn personal development, business, and any kind of network marketing, regardless of what company they choose. 
we want to just be able to be that blessing to other people because we feel so honored and humbled that we've had the kind of career that we've had and we're still well into that career. So it's, this is still the beginning stages of what we see happening, but that's where I think my head is. And I know Pasha, I'll, I'll turn it over to you to answer that question as well, but I'm excited about the next 15 years, Richard, and I'm excited about rubbing elbows with guys like yourself and Kimmy and, and all of us just doing life together and, and being an impact to other people, that's where my passion is. It, it transitioned from being all about what I can do for myself to now what can we do for others. So I'll turn it to you, Pasha. Yes, uh, Richard. For, the, for me, what I see over the next 15 years, because so many of our friends and partners and um, colleagues, we all have children now. And so for us, it's developing the next wave of leaders the next wave of entrepreneurs, and I'm so passionate about that because we have such an amazing platform that now I realize and I see, you know, our children now, when I talk to them or I talk to, you know, some of our peers' children, they think differently because at a young age they're taught business ownership, they're taught leadership, they're taught, you know, um, how to have a healthy lifestyle. They, They learn about wealth because many of us that are network marketers, we're teaching them this. So I, I'm excited about the next 15 years of grooming our children and um, understanding that we're responsible for the next generation here in America and really making this country a better place based on what we're instilling in our children who are the future. And um, also for us is partnering with, and to uplift our profession as a whole. You know, a lot of times network marketing can come under scrutiny and all of this stuff, and many of us who have, you know, um, gone the path and we've created the success and that's why I love your platform because your platform you, you, you're very um, intentional about who you interview they have to have certain qualities they have to have integrity they have to you know tell the truth and get on here and be an open book and I love that and I feel that as we partner up and link up with those leaders in this profession that we're going to be able to take network marketing to a whole nother level and that's important not only for stability, but it's important for us to create that so that 15 years down the road, when our children now are starting their own companies and they're coming into the network marketing profession, that we've made this profession a better place for them to be able to walk right in and pick up where we left off and create generational wealth for their children. Yeah, that's beautiful. All right, wrapping it, that's a beautiful vision. Pasha, I just, you know, I probably shouldn't bring politics into this, but, you know, when you watch our current political process and race and you ask yourself, wow, so these are the two best leaders that the United States of America can put forth, and this is their best work in terms of communicating their ideas to the public, selling us on their vision this is the best they can do and where they actually end up is this is this is I wrote about this the other day this is what their campaign effort sounds like this no one should vote for you because you're wrong and evil yeah. and the and the response is no you're more wrong and more evil. More evil. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that about right. sums it up. That is so true. That sums it up. <laughs> it's just, I, you know, it is so disheartening and pathetic, and you got to ask yourself, you know, <laughs> did, did it, did, have the two of you ever read any personal development books? Have you ever been to any <laughs> transformational programs? Has anybody ever taught you how to communicate besides yeah. – one of your campaign drones, um, it's, you know, I am so excited for the future of our country to have, you know, it's not, it doesn't have anything to do with network marketing so much. It's just, you know, people that have dedicated their lives to service, and I don't mean right. like public service. I mean just like heartfelt service and communication and leadership and contribution and and they haven't gone through life thinking they're right about everything. Right. Absolutely. Uh, we we have the opportunity to to serve up some leaders. You know, Kimmy's daughter 
He's now 19, uh, and he's not legally my son, but I have a 19-year-old a, a son. And, um, you know, both of these kids were raised as network marketers. They were raised in right. network marketing families. They've, they've been listening to personal development stuff since they were, you know, two or three or four years old. And uh, it's just really exciting to think to, – to see what we might produce there. And your four children, you know, they got, they've been indoctrinated since day one and really exciting to see what we might be able to contribute to the world with thoughtful, developed leaders that are not about their ego, not about being right, not about making other people wrong, but really looking for solutions. So, my hat's off to the two of you. Um, I'm I'm honored to have the opportunity to interview you, um, and congratulations on your 15th wedding anniversary. And thank you so much for taking an hour of your 15th wedding anniversary and sharing with all of us. And you know, people are listening to this live, but I think more importantly, people will be listening to this a year from now, five years from now maybe 10 years from now, and they'll be listening from all over the world. And all it takes, folks, is all it takes is one thing, one thing that Pasha right. said, one thing that Steve said, and you, you may have actually heard it before. Maybe you just weren't ready for it to change you, or maybe you heard it in a way that did change you. And all of us can trace back our success to a defining moment uh, a moment where something happened might have been something somebody said. It might have just been through enough space repetition or osmosis, osmosis. Maybe something kind of disruptive happened in our life that made us have a wake-up call. But all of us can trace back in our successful network marketing careers a defining moment where something just flipped. And we said yeah. to ourselves, you know, from this day forward, I'm I'm going to be the leader that makes this happen, and there's only going to be circumstances for me to move through. There's not going to be any excuses, and I don't need for anybody or anything to do anything to make it happen for me. It's I'm going to make it all happen, and you just drop into this place where you're done screwing around, you're done with excuses, you're done telling telling stories, you're done waiting for the right moment you're just going to make it happen you don't need another video you don't need another app you don't need a you don't need another event that your company you know as soon as they do this i'm going to knock it out of the park you just drop into that place and our purpose here on these hero calls is to just put it just keep putting you in an event where you sit and soak it all in soak it in from people that have had that opportunity to have that defining moment and then look what happened to their lives. I mean, look what happened to Pasha and Steve's life just from making that defining moment decision about we're going to build this. Yep. Extraordinary things and they're just getting started. So thank you two so much for spending an hour with us. We'll have this. Our pleasure. Uh, and uh, thank you all for joining us tonight. Have a fantastic week, and we'll see you in two weeks, every Wednesday night at 6 p.m. Pacific time. We capture another hero story. Mm -hmm. Good night, everyone. Thank you, Richard. All right. Thank you, Thanks, Richard. Richard. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Richard Bliss Brooks Network Marketing Heroes Podcast. 